I think there's clearly a rational to target VEGF in HTC. First of all, it's a hypervascularized um, tumor, and we know that um, a key driver for um, angiogenesis is VEGF. And um, when we look at the outcome of patients that have a high VEGF um, levels in, in their blood, we do know that this is a poor prognostic ma a marker and that um, these patients usually have a pretty short survival that has been reported in several trials. When we look at the drugs that we use for the treatment, these are all um, multi-tyrosine kinase inhibitors, so they have different targets. And therefore, it was ne never really clear which of the targets is the most important target. And I mean, we do know that it includes an effect on the tumor microenvironment, on angiogenesis, and also on the tumor cells itself. And because they have so many targets, it was really difficult to, to, to bring it down to one target, VEGF, for example, as the most important um, target for their efficacy. And only with the Ramosurumab data, I think we have really proof of concept that targeting the VEGF receptor pathway really has an impact on tumor progression and that this is a, uh, a very important um, target for, for, for the treatment of HCC. LEACH2 was uh, designed uh, based on the previous negative trial, LEACH. LEACH was negative uh, because all commas trial, the that was negative, but by sub-analysis, the patients with FP value greater than 400 nanogram, the ram serumab showed a better survival than placebo. S but uh, patient in patients with uh, FP value less than 400 nanogram, there is no difference. So uh, we decided the to run uh, uh, REACH2 study. Uh, the only difference was, difference between REACH2 and REACH was uh, the only patients with AFP value greater than 400 nanogram was included and the stratification factor, the macrovascular invasion was included. So this is so-called uh, biomarker-based uh, trial so it was a uh, very successful trial. Only we enrolled 292 patients, it, which is small number, but it was successful. Uh, median OSM RAM syndrome was 8.5 months, and placebo arm median OSM was, was so median OS and RAM serum um, was 8.5 months and uh, 7.3 months in placebo arm. Hazard ratio was 0 0.71 and uh, significantly the RAM serum was showed a better survival. And response rate was good and the progression free survival was significant significantly better, so uh, the, re the trial was uh, successful. At the moment, we do not really have clear evidence why IFP is a good biomarker for the treatment of HTC. And actually, when we look at the data from the other trials, the other multi-tyrosine kinase inhibitors, they also do work in patients with a high IFP level. So this is not really specific for ramosirumab. The, the most important point about ramosirumab is that it does not work in patients with a low AFP level. So, but how this really works in, in, in detail, the, the underlying molecular mechanism, I think are not really completely understood at this point in time. This is a first uh, biomarker selec selected uh, trial. So it, it's good to have a biomarker to, to make the trial successful. So it was successful. So now we know the uh, high FP value, uh, patients with high FP value, the lam is, uh, is uh, potent and uh, very uh, effective. But in addition, the, as, a, as, as a matter of fact, I mean, trial and uh, uh, real world practice is a little bit different. If we look at the data, the the reach, the PFS anti tumor activity was still uh, positive in uh, the uh, 
in patients with uh, AFP level less than 400 nanogram, at least more than 10 nanogram, there is a uh, antitumor activity. So in clinical practice, maybe elevated AFP value, the patients with elevated AFP value, the lamp cinema will be effective. So it is a little bit different uh, between the clinical trial and the real-world practice.